So the Brexiteers for at least the past couple of days have been elated, elated with the news that we have signed a, a trade deal with India. Now, as always, the devil's in the detail. But as for those of you who have been following the, the post-Brexit trade announcements, you will notice the pattern of what we have overwhelmingly seen. First of all, the Japan deal. The Japan deal was terrible. It overwhelmingly favoured the Japanese. We have had the South Korean and the Canada deal, which are not free trade agreements. Those are rollover agreements, currently saying that we are going to keep the current same trade until a trade deal can be arranged. And again, I do not think those trade deals are going to be very advantageous to us because we are a lot smaller market to them. Not only that, we've had the uh, rumblings of the New Zealand and Australia trade agreements, which again with Australia would see us have a massive trade deficit with Australia and with New Zealand. Remember, we do more trade with the Republic of Ireland than we do with, well, <laughs> than we do even with New Zealand. Again, even with a trade deal, this would not change. And ultimately, as we saw, we've seen with the Mexican trade deal, we can see that the Brexiteers and indeed the free market fundamentalists have absolutely no intention to try and defend domestic production, which would essentially mean that all these trade deals are going to end up results in jobs leaving the UK and going overseas because, well, it's now cheaper to import than it is to export from the UK. Again, this will not be a good economic outlook for the future, especially for the areas that used to be ex-industrial and have been de-industrialised, that were hoping for all this investment to be able to actually work. And of course, we found out this morning that even Boris Johnson can't articulate what levelling up actually means and have now had to try and hire a new um, outside advisor to advise him on what that actually means. Thus, as I've always said, the two big ideas in the Tory party. Turns out levelling up was never on the agenda. Turns out global Britain is what they want. And of course, now we're going to get into why essentially, once again, this new trade deal with India is just absolutely, absolutely terrible. And this comes from the spectator. So, and a spectator is normally very, very pro-conservative. So, uh, before we do jump into that, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page, as well as a one donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And thank you to all those people that do support me that way. So, like I said, this comes from the spectator. And the title is oh, The Emptiness of the UK-India Trade Deal. So Britain and India have been trading for over 400 years. For, for 190 of those, between 1757 and 1947, the subcontinent was close to being a captive market of the United Kingdom. And again, that was all down to, essentially, we were their colonial overlords, um, they had no choice but to do that. Today, the commercial turnover between the two nations is a mere 23 billion. It is a tenth of the goods and services that are trafficked between Britain and the European Union. Once again, clear, clear examples of why, again, we should be far, far more focused on being in the European Union and being in the single market and customs union than even trying to bother going out to all these other markets because our European Union is far, far, far more important. Like I say, only a tenth, a tenth of the trade between the UK and India compared to what we get from the European Union and in goods and services. So for many Leave voters, Boris Johnson included, Expanding trade ties beyond the EU's borders was a major motivation for Brexit. India was seen as both an exciting emerging market, but also a nation that is culturally entwined with this one. However, five years after Britain voted to depart the lucrative single market, all Johnson and Narida Modi have been able to uh, conjure up is the 
blown up expectation enhanced trade partnership. Downing Street was surely exaggerating when it called yesterday's deal a historic commitment between the two leaders. Modi too has been engaged in been engaging in a game of spin. On the day the pair announced the agreement, the Booker Prize winning Indian novelist Aldo Arturia Roy endorsed a chorus of millions uh, of her compatriots who have been pleading for Modi's resignation in the face of the country's resurgent pandemic. We need a government desperately, and we don't have one. I beseech you to step down, she pleaded. But Modi proceeded with the summit in the hopes of offering some good news to Indians demoralised by the COVID crisis. After a virtual meeting with Modi, Johnson claimed an extra one billion worth of UK India free trade uh, uh, and investment had been ensured, along with over 6,000 new British jobs. Included too was the 24 million investment by the Suram Institute of India, the world's biggest vaccine maker. But much of the deal sounded like wishful thinking. Indian companies, uh, Infoshoys and HLC Technologies, promised about a thousand jobs each, but their financial commitments were, undis were unstated. And M. Pfizer's, uh, another Indian firm, will amazingly provide another thousand jobs by sinking just 35 million into the UK economy. The agreement does not reflect a major leap forward on a mutual commitment on education and it could trigger an increase in Indian students studying in UK universities. Perhaps an attempt by number 10 to try and replace the Chinese students that have been abandoning British higher education thanks to Covid and increased hostilities. Meanwhile, British fruit producers will be able to export apples, pears and, uh, and quince to India for the first time. But a pledge to remove barriers to enable British lawyers to practice in India has so far been unrealised because of resistance from the Indian legal fraternity and was recycled, having been mooted for decades. The Trade Minister Liz Truss persevered with her win-win sing-song in TV interview while conceding India was yet to give in on lower tariffs for imports for British cars and Scottish whisky. There was obviously no meeting of the minds on an important Indian demand for reduced import duties on garments and textiles either. In 2010, David Cameron enthusi enthusiastically held a speech uh, said about the special relationship between India and aimed at doubling trade between the two countries in five years from around 10 billion. The target was obviously missed and the suggestion of further doubling down over the next decade is an admission that the most uh, populous member of the Commonwealth will not significantly compensate for, uh, for the likely loss of revenue from the EU. Both nations continue to harp on about free trade agreements, with the promise of full talks resuming in autumn. India and the EU began, no began negotiating one in 2007, with Britain an, internal, an integral part of that dialogue. Before they were suspended, the exercise in 2013, due to what Brussels described as a gap in the level of ambition. While the two sides remain engaged, there is still no tangible process. There are still fundamental differences in a comprehensive opening of markets and on social and environmental consequences in the event of a full trade agreement. The issues that impede an India-EU trade deal have also played an Anglo-Indian understanding. For example, an Indian quest for easier travel to the UK was seen as untenable given the British wariness to mass immigration although scepticism over immigration has softened in the last few years. Britain's relaxation of visa rules was also dependent on India taking back tens of thousands of suspected illegal immigrants in the UK, which Modi agreed to, but soon reneged, reneged on in 2018. Soon after the talks between the head of governments, Priti Patel and the external affairs minister, uh, Salwin Justakar, signed a protocol in London whereby Indian professionals... Oh, Ugh, go away, go away. <laughs> there. Whereby uh, Indian um, Indian professionals will be permitted to work in the UK for up to two years. Meanwhile, the process to return Indian nationalists who have no right to stay in Britain will be accelerated. 
Johnson and Modi, quote, upgraded the strategic partnership established in 2004 when Tony Blair was prime minister to a comprehensive strategic partnership. This meaning remains unarticulated and Britain's hopes that the change translates into a greater defence purchases by India. Modi, despite bankrupting his country, has displayed a passion for military hardware consistent with his authoritarian tendencies. If China continues to violate Indian territory, British arms manufacturers may soon see the rupees flooding in. And there have been no major investment projects either uh, since Modi came to power in 2014. Unfortunately for Britain, the Indian economy has subsequently collapsed under the weight of the coronavirus. Uh, as it is, the Indian Prime Minister had previously stewarded a steady downward spiral in the Indian economy, and Indian businesses are completely despondent, and the export options are exploring options abroad, and Britain could be a beneficiary of such investment. Modi's attempts at international politics appear increasingly ill-timed to those watching back home. His unpreparedness in the face of a second Covid ways and the, uh, and the chastening election uh, defeat in the state of the West Bengal have rattled the ruling uh, party. The prospects of greater trade with Britain is unlikely to ease their discomfort. So, as you can see, it ain't going to happen. All these Indian companies were either, yeah, well, we'll create an extra thousand jobs, but no input no input and then obviously you had the company that said oh yes we'll we'll invest 35 million that's nothing that may sound a lot but a company saying oh yeah we'll we'll bring an extra you know couple of thousand jobs you know so what <laughs> you know so what and like i say ultimately it's very likely very very likely that these jobs aren't going to go to the north they are probably ultimately going to go to the city of london um, and, and again, ultimately, once again, this idea of leveling up again pales because, again, Johnson isn't as very clearly articulated. He has no idea what leveling up actually means. And once again, we have yet another trade deal signed by these Brexiteers where it is just absolutely, completely heartless. There is nothing at the core of this. This does not benefit the UK. We've seen this before where David Cameron tried to say, oh yes, we'll, we'll double the um, exports by over 10 billion. Again, that was not achieved. Why? Because once again, that article said the same thing which every single trade expert has been saying. There is no way that other countries can fill the void lost of the all the money and investment jobs that we lose from leaving the EU and being in the single market and customs union. It's going to be a repeating pattern probably for the rest of this year, at least until the government decides to re-engage with the EU, but we know that's not going to happen until at least next year, and then we'll have to see what happens there. Again, I'll be very interesting to see when that happens. But as always, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page as well as a wonderful donation link called Buy Me A Coffee where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.